Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Grandian Associates uh, to, uh, Advantage webinar this morning, uh, Five Profit killer, Killers of Your Service Department. Uh, today's presenter is Tom Grandy. He's the founder of uh, Grandian Associates. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. The uh, webinar this morning will be recorded, so after the webinar, you should receive an email uh, with the uh, attachment. Uh, so if you want to go back and uh, watch this again or share it with others, you're welcome to do that. And then uh, any questions that you might have, feel free to type them in. Uh, Tom will take some questions at the end to see uh, answer any of those that you have. Uh, so at this time, I'll turn it over to Tom. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you uh, all who are listening today and watching. I appreciate you taking the valuable time out of your schedules. Hopefully you're all having a really good year so far. Uh, whenever I put on a one-day seminar, or especially when we're working with companies one-on-one, -on -one, it's not unusual to go through their modeling process and find out, you know what, we're, we're priced right in service, but something's going on. We're not making any money. Well, there's actually five profit killers within your service department, any one of which, any one of which has the ability to literally suck all the profit out of that department, even though you're priced right in the middle of the process. That's going to be our overall topic today. We're going to cover a couple things before we get to those specific uh, killers. Uh, in terms of what we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about why service is normally not profitable, at least as an industry. Hopefully that's not your case. Uh, we're going to talk about who's really running the service department, and it's not usually the uh, people or persons we think they are. Uh, we're going to look at several reasons for poor performance in your service department. And then we're going to kind of lay a little blame and find out what's going on between the service and management in terms of uh, whose fault is it we're not doing this and what do we need to do about it. Then we're going to talk about the specific five profit killers in your service department and then we're going to set some very specific goals. So, so that's what we're going to do over the next uh, little bit or so. Now when it comes to service, service should be the most profitable part of your company, but it usually isn't. A well-run service department should should be netting at least a 15% net profit. And if you're on flat rate pricing, that can easily jump to 15 to 20, sometimes as high as 25%. But as an industry, as a trades industry, we're not. Why? Well, number one, improper labor pricing. And number two, management. Those are the two things that keep us from making the profits that we should be making in our service department. Now, why is service underpriced as an industry? Well, think about it for a moment. The cost of running your service department is huge, at least compared to other departments within your company. Uh, cost of non-billable time, 50%. Now, some of you have tracked this, and you know that's a good number, good industry number. Others of us are looking at that and saying, you mean half the time I pay my text for, I can't bill my customer? Uh, yep, the answer is yes. By the time you consider shop time in the morning, shop time in the afternoon, travel time between jobs, uh, sick, vacation, holiday time, uh, throw in some uh, customer no-shows, a couple of warranties uh, calls, uh, and then maybe an occasional training session back at the office. You average it for the year, about half their time, you can't charge the customer. What about support staff? I mean, if you've got more than two or three or four service techs, uh, you probably have a full-time dispatcher, okay? and, and, uh, <coughs> and, and other office staff to support that as well. And what about equipment replacement costs? Well, gee, we're on the road all the time. So we wear out equipment much, much more quickly uh, than the other departments do. And then there's fuel and maintenance. Uh, well, gee, again, our service guys are on the road all day, every day. So maintenance on their vehicles is high, and uh, obviously their fuel cost is extremely high. And then we've got the general overhead for the service department uh, overall. I mean, it just cost, in, literally just cost a lot of money to run the service department. Now, if you take all those costs of doing business, which are really high in this department, and then you figure the limited number of billed hours that you have that you can actually bill a customer, guess what? Our hourly rates get really high really quick. As a matter of fact, if you run the real numbers, most everybody in the industry, if you run the real numbers for service, including all the cost of doing business from a cash flow perspective, it's the rare company that can charge less than $100 an hour and still make a profit. I've seen it done, uh, but it's rare. If you're actually cost building in all your real cost of doing business, uh, most of the time you're looking at $100, $150 an hour or more.
to run your service department. Now, the other hat, hat side of it, from a pricing standpoint, is management. Okay. Uh, why is management a problem? Well, gee, there's a whole bunch of variables out there. And there's never been, at least until today, uh, key performance indicators to measure your service against. Now, what should we be doing in each of the different areas? Now, that's an entirely different seminar. Hopefully, we'll pick that one up here in a few weeks. And then again, there's no system for tracking performance and rewarding your technicians. And if we don't have a way to set a goal and measure our performance against it and reward our technicians, guess what? They're not going to be effective. Now, let's start out with a kind of an interesting question. And the question is, who's really running your service department? Now, some of your larger companies, you've got a service manager, so the obvious question is, well, my service manager is running the company, or the service department. Or maybe you're a smaller company and you're the owner and, and you got two or three service techs and I'm running the service department. <laughs> well, you know who's really, really running the service department? When it gets right down to it, it's usually your most.